Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Long Sight, Joshua Long, and Ohio Trucker 1. You are the reason why this content remains amazing, which is a serious overestimation again, but that's okay because today we have a list of amazing locomotives for you in this sixth installment of five of the best trains ever. The Southern Pacific GS4. Yeah, I've been getting this requested a lot, and I've been a little reluctant to put it on the list because, okay, the GS4 is iconic, it is a good type of locomotive, but the success of the GS5 was much better. Why the GS4 though? Well, what the GS4 lacks in terms of power output and speed and everything, it makes up for in Legacy. GS4s were streamlined 484 locomotives, and they worked for the Southern Pacific Railroad Company from 1941 to 1958. They were built by Lima Locomotive Works, and they were designed to be a good, all-around type of steam locomotive. The thing about the GS4s, and a lot of the GSs to be frank, is that they were never really exceptional at any one thing. They weren't as fast as Hudson's, they weren't as powerful as FEFs, but the GS4s were so flexible. And I think that was one of their biggest strengths overall. You could put them on pretty much any kind of train, and they'd be fine at it. Now, they were designed for passenger service initially, but they wound up being reassigned to freight trains and were perfectly fine at that. But sadly, like every steam locomotive, they couldn't escape the impending dieselization of America's rail lines. And 27 of the 28 were scrapped. The 28th, number 4449, is the only surviving member of the class, and to be honest, it's probably one of the most recognizable locomotives of all time. Why is that? Well, look at it. It's orange. In fact, the GS4s were often painted orange. It was known as the Daylight Paint Scheme, and 4449 pulls what's known as the Daylight Express. She originally sat on static display at the Oaks Amusement Park, but that was until 1974 when she was removed from that spot and went to undergo restoration. She pulled the American Freedom Train from 1975 to 1976, and she's still operational to this day, currently residing at the Oregon Rail Heritage Center in Portland, Oregon. The EMC, E-A-E-B. Okay, right off the bat, serious question. What the heck is an EMC? What about EMD? Well, EMC, Electromotive Corporation, was what EMD originally went by. Now, these diesels were actually the first of EMD's E units, the cousins of the F units. So basically, the EA slash EBs are the original sources of dieselization in America. They were 1800 horsepower meant to operate in pairs, one A unit and one B unit. The difference was the B units didn't have any cabs, and were just meant to boost the operation of the A units. Only six of each was ever produced, but they were built specifically for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Back then, the design ethos for EMC's diesel locomotives was to produce them specifically for each railway, making each design individual and distinctive for each railway's needs. Eventually, they stopped doing this, realizing that a more general assembly line style diesel was a lot more lucrative. But despite that, the EAs and the EBs were really good. You have to remember they were built in 1937. Very old for diesel standards, but they could travel up to 99 miles per hour. Only one was ever able to enter preservation. B&O number 51, which was the first EA built, is preserved at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum in, well, Baltimore, Maryland. The Reading T1. Not to be confused with every other T1 that was ever designed when it comes to locomotives. I don't know why there were so many T1s. There were at least four that I am aware of. It was a class of 484 Northern type steam locomotives owned by the Reading Company. And they're an odd choice for this list because they're technically rebuilds. They were designed from 30 of the I 10 SAs, which were 280 consolidation type locomotives. The reason they did this is they needed a more powerful type of steam locomotive, but due to World War II, and even the post-war economy, designing one from scratch would have been very expensive and difficult. So they figured they'd try to remodel some of their old ones, and the result was the T1, 
and they were exceptional actually, probably one of the best steam locomotives ever to run on American rail lines, right up there with the Niagara's and the FEF's. Their primary purpose was fast freight service, which they were exceptional at, but they had been assigned to passenger trains as well, which they handled beautifully. But sadly, they didn't even last 10 years, and that was due to, again, dieselization. They were out of service by 1954. Precisely four are still preserved. 2100, 2101, 2102, and 2124. The NS Class 1200, a class of electric locomotive built between 1951 and 1953 for the Niederlandse Sporwagen. I still love that name. They were actually designed by Baldwin, believe it or not, which might explain why they look a little bulldog nosy like American diesels of that era tended to be. But they were built by Workspor, a Dutch machine factory. The construction process for this one was a little weird because some of the parts were actually constructed in the United States. The reason for this is that these locomotives were one of the direct products of the Marshall Plan. What was the Marshall Plan? Well, it was an American initiative that was enacted in 1948 in response to the economic situation in Western Europe. See, as you might imagine, World War II kind of decimated Europe. A significant portion of the fighting was there, and after the war was over, people needed to rebuild. But that's easier said than done. The continental United States was pretty much untouched by the war, but Western Europe was still suffering, trying to pick up the pieces of everything they had lost. So the Marshall Plan was meant to help alleviate that. $13 billion in economic recovery programs were sent specifically to benefit Western Europe, and one of them wound up producing the Class 1200. And these were phenomenal electric locomotives. They entered service in 1951 and weren't retired till 1998. That's an insane longevity. And that was just under Niederlandse Sporwagen. ACTS Niederland BV continued to use five of them in freight and charter service until 2010 and other smaller railways continued to use them until 2017. They're an incredible piece of work. The British Rail Class 91. What's that, you say? Wh what? More British ra No! Oh, no! Do I want more British Rail? No, of course I do. Why would you ever think that? But I guess it's happening anyway. I don't even know why you asked the question. You know I have no choice about it. Class 91 is a high-speed electric locomotive. 31 of them were produced between 1988 and 1991, and they're also known as the Inner City 225. During their development, they were called Electras, and much of the design work that went into these was actually based off their experience with the APT. Despite what you may think of the APT, the Class 91s are incredible pieces of work. They were reliable, the train sets were comfortable, and more specifically, they were fast. 91010 which has now been renumbered to 91110, actually holds the British locomotive speed record, which it set on the 17th of September 1989 by traveling 161.7 miles per hour, or 260.2 kilometers per hour. Technically, other classes, the 370s, 373s, and 374s, have all traveled faster, but they are EMUs. Class 91 is a locomotive, so it's officially the fastest locomotive in Britain. Sadly, it's unclear how long the Class 91s still have. The withdrawal process for them was started in 2019, but 12 of them are currently still in service and 12 are stored. Only 4 have been scrapped. The reason the withdrawal is taking so long is that many of the new types that were supposed to replace them are not very good. We've talked about them. So the 91s can't be done away with. And to be fair, hey, they work. They're great, in fact. So, I uh, mean, if you can't find something that's better, then I would say just keep using the 91s. I think that's a good idea. It's literally one of the best things you guys ever did. I'm just saying. Maybe not throw it away like that. Till next time, this is Darkness, and a bit of a fond farewell.